so hi and um, for those who don't know me my name is becca i'm the digital marketing executive here at wilson cook and i primarily work a lot on social both paid and organic um so with that obviously i'm looking at new social trends um looking to see what makes people click because as we all know social is constantly changing what worked last year might not work this year and vice versa and um, you've got like new platforms that that come up constantly. Um, so for example, TikTok, um, but also the demographics, etc., cetera, do, do change over time and what people use and what people use social for does change over time. And um, so we will we will be covering a lot of that um kind of in this in this presentation and mainly looking um at what Hootsuite have found as the recent trends as well. Um, so Hootsuite, I don't know if you know, but every every year Hootsuite come up with a social um trends report. And what they do is they get a load of respondents and kind of ask them how they view their marketing strategies. Um, so a lot of that kind of links into what the industry is also seeing, but how we can capitalize on that as well. So I just wanted to start with some key stats. Um, these are kind of what I was saying before. These kind of show that social is always changing and the way people use social is constantly changing, um, which makes my job very fun and exciting, but also can be quite hard as well because we constantly have to adapt and change based on kind of upcoming trends and, and how people perceive social. Um, so I just wanted to put in a stat about social media usage now I'm pretty sure everyone on this call at least has one social media um platform and is at least signed up to one social media plat uh, platform um but the world's most used social media platform is Facebook and um, which comes as no surprise it has been for the past few years followed by YouTube which has also been a top one up there WhatsApp um is also counted as a social media platform so that's also up there and Instagram and um, that kind of comes as no surprise for a lot of it um, but it is worth noting that TikTok is constantly kind of increasing year on year as well so that's one to look out for um with Facebook being the top social media um platform I just wanted to put in um a couple of demographics um demographics aren't everything by the way um but I think it's kind of interesting to know what the biggest audience is on a on a chan uh, on a platform sorry so you can actually um use that to to your advantage especially if your target audience is within those demographics and um, so the biggest demographic on social is males aged 25 to 34 and um, but you will see when you look at kind of other um stats and graphs from the past few years and um, the older demographics are also coming more onto Facebook as well and um, so they are constantly increasing um so Facebook the good thing about Facebook is, is there is a wide usage of it um, and obviously it's the most used um platform as well so you can really reach a massive audience on there both B2B and B2C as we know with a lot of our clients um, one thing that I've touched on in a couple of my other learning lunches and that has not changed is that video content is still very, very effective. And um, so a video post increases interaction by 600% on Facebook, which is massive. And um, what I've also said is that short form video as well um, is really um, coming come up and coming really. Um, and a lot of that um, is down to TikTok and people are used to kind of consuming more shorter video than longer video that now that's not to say that people don't consume longer video because as we know YouTube is still one of the most used platforms which is obviously a typically um, longer video um, platform however how people consume video is changing there is also an interesting stat about a lot of people that actually view videos on Facebook and Instagram actually don't view it with sound on as well and um, so it's about how you can be a little bit creative with the video content that you put out there using captions using design and um, keeping it as raw as possible as well and um, also works really nicely behind the scenes content etc um, and videos get 21.2% more engagement on Instagram compared to images um, so video content does really well on Instagram as well also Instagram is really good for carousel um, images as you would have seen um, 
there was an interesting stat. I didn't put it in because I didn't want to give you too many stats. Um, but there is an interesting stat as well about how many people consume carousels on Instagram, which is obviously the swipe through one. That's quite nice. And we use that for our own marketing as well, because you can kind of tell a story with, with the carousel a little bit better. And then I've just put in a stat about utilizing social for your business. So I know a lot of people on this call um, work within businesses or have their own businesses. So this was kind of a key one that I wanted to put in. 90% um, of accounts follow at least one business on Instagram, which is absolutely massive. Pretty sure everyone on this call, if you've got Instagram, pretty sure everyone would probably say they follow at least one business. I know I do. I've got a few of my favorites on there. 83% um, of Instagram users discover new products and services on Instagram. Um, so it's really good to discover kind of um, a lot of people do a lot of research on Instagram as well um, and kind of look at engagement and kind of what Instagram feeds look like, etc. And just the brand tone of voice is massive um, on social as well and how you um, get across your values and cultures. And 45% of marketers have gained customers through LinkedIn and we know LinkedIn is really good for B2, from a B2B perspective. Um, I do always say it's a little bit more pricier um, but obviously LinkedIn has some amazing resources such as Sales Navigator as well and it's about how you really utilize um, LinkedIn both profiles and pages to drive that engagement and build that community. Um, so when I was looking through this, I felt it was only right to kind of introduce the social marketing funnel um, because the way that social works from an ROI, a leads and inquiries perspective is very different from PPC, for example. And I know I rave on about this all the time, um, but hopefully this social marketing funnel will showcase kind of what I've been talking about a little bit more. Now, this is a constantly used funnel and um, places like Sprout Social, Hootsuite, they use this funnel a lot. Um, so before we get started, what we can expect from social, we need to know, we need to be aware of where social fits in the marketing funnel and how we can really leverage this for our overall marketing efforts, because there are lots of different um, points of the social marketing funnel. Typically, social is great for awareness. And that is what I kind of said about getting your brand voice across, your cultures, your values, how you want your audience to perceive your brand, but also reaching those new customers as well. And um, you've got the consideration stage. So typically, this might be people starting to kind of engage a little bit more with you on social. And um, they might end up asking questions, and um, they might end up commenting, liking, um, even just kind of scrolling through your page and kind of interacting a little bit more and then you've got your conversion stage which is obviously where they're ready to convert um so this can be done through building the awareness the consideration and then the conversion um and a lot of that is kind of about how you use social and how you utilize it which we'll go into a little bit further on um, and then you've obviously got loyalty and advocacy so a lot of loyalty and advocacy is kind of about customer testimonials getting people to post reviews you might potentially have face you might use facebook groups and um, for your loyalty and advocacy stage so really get those customers into a community we'll get onto that a little bit later on and about how important it is to build a community via social and how that is growing year on year um, so it can often be hard to measure the success of social as a lot is built around brand awareness. And I have this constantly um, and it makes my job really, really hard is that it is very hard to measure what you get from social. You can get into tools like social listening to see what people are saying on social about your brand um, is kind of a good way to go about it. But also building up that that audience and kind of getting that engagement um, and building your brand up on social, using it as a platform to kind of shout about who you are and what you can do for the customer. And um, so it comes as no surprise that only 38% of companies felt social media is excellent or good for ROI, um, whereas 56% of agency respondents um, said that it was good for ROI. So a lot of companies don't tend to see um, the direct of the direct impact of social for ROI, um, whereas a lot of agencies do. Um, one thing that we do a lot at Wilson Cook is we look at conversion paths and how that fits into the overall marketing the marketing funnel um, and kind of look and see the different touch points, especially if people, for example, start, it may be social and then they finish, you know, doing an organic search um, 
conversion, then a lot of that will be uh, that will be attributed to organic search. But it is kind of looking at the conversion paths and seeing where social fits into that. So that's a lot of what we do to kind of prove the worth of social. But like I said, social listening is also a good one if you have a bit of a bigger brand. Um, so I've just put in a did you know stat. There's a couple of fun did you knows in here. Um, but 49% of people in the 18 to 29 age range report purchasing something after seeing a social media ad for it. I know I've done the same. Boohoo constantly give me ads and I see all kind of the nicest things that they have. And I have been very guilty of making impulse purchases because of it. But that is also because I do have some sort of brand loyalty to that brand as well. Um, so 71% of consumers who had a positive experience with a brand on social media are likely to recommend the brand to their friends and family. We'll get onto this a little bit later on, but this comes a lot of it comes around customer service and how you can use social media to leverage customer service as well. So this is another one and um, I've just spoken about. So not forgetting conversion paths. So with social being a heavily brand awareness centered channel and being lower down the purchase funnel, typically, um, it's important to look at different conversion paths and attribution models rather than just last click to measure its impact. And um, so I've added a screenshot on the right hand side there, um, which is actually an example of conversion paths for one of our B2B clients. And um, so I've put you notice how GA would attribute these conversions to direct and organic. And um, so you can see that some have started from direct, but they've also had so social touch points and then the top one there they started at social and then they converted via direct obviously this is based on on people's um cookie um cookie policies etc and whether they accept cookies so it's it's not possible to look at every single conversion path for everyone um and also it's worth noting that people do kind of look at stuff on different devices, et cetera. But this is just kind of one example where we were able to look at the conversion paths. Um, and one thing that I've put in is it's import, especially important to remember that in B2B environments, the average sale length is six plus months. And um, so a lot of people will kind of come back to us after two months and kind of look at the impact of social. But it's key to remember that especially for new customers and um, but also existing customers as well and um, you're looking at kind of one to six months before you can kind of see any impact um from sales overall and um, so that includes kind of looking at social from kind of the top consideration and then there's different touch points which can be at up to six months long um, so looking at the trends and the nitty gritty now that we've done kind of the introduction and we know where social fits into the conversion funnel, et cetera, um, I wanted to put in what we need to look out for in 2022. And there's some interesting things in here that you can also use for your own businesses. So one thing that I touched on that's going to be massive is building your community. And um, so this includes partnering with various creators to leverage your brand community. Um, Communities is seen as a dedicated place to connect, share and get closer to the discussions people care about the most. And um, a lot of brands are starting to build up kind of their own communities and how they do this is um, they do this in lots of different ways. So, for example, making the use of Facebook groups. I never used to be a massive fan of Facebook groups, but if you think about it, there are a lot more people kind of using Facebook groups and more open to them specifically for like buy and sell stuff um, in your local area, job postings. I know there's a lot of kind of community forums um, if you live in kind of a smaller community. So people are more open to um, using Facebook groups um, and you can also utilize this for your business especially if you're kind of if you're looking at an audience which fits um, key Facebook demographics as well and you want to use it as a hub to kind of share exclusive news to get people to share user generated content and obviously with Facebook groups as well you can approve um, the posts that go out so you're not you don't you don't have to deal with any kind of iffy um, posts that people want to want to put on there because you can approve everything. Another massive one is using creators um, slash influencers, um, which has been a massive up and coming thing for the past few years, um, but also using different types of influencers as well. 
So instead of trying to build a community from the ground up, you can also leverage creator communities to learn more about customers, simplify content creation and build brand awareness and, and affinity. So you'll find a lot of the bigger brands do kind of utilize co certain content creators and use them to leverage their communities. I mean, if you're looking at something a little bit more controversial, um, look at how kind of James Charles and Morphe did that collaboration and how it impacted Morphe and whether Morphe were gonna um, work with him. But what Morphe did was they were able to leverage James Charles's existing audience because they used kind of that that influencer marketing in that way. Um, so it's about picking, picking the influencers that kind of reflect your brand but also about leveraging their community and building your community through that, which is why it's important to look at influences that kind of align with your value, your brand values and culture, especially. And um, don't feel that you need to look for the biggest macro influencer either. I've said this so much, micro influencers are completely on the rise um, because they tend to have better engagement rates than people who have like 200,000 followers. So normally we tend to kind of look at the follower numbers and we think 200,000 followers, that's great. They have a big audience, so they're going to be great for us. But then you might look at their posts and see that they get three comments per post. Um, and obviously their audience is not massively engaged. So I would much rather go for an influencer that has kind of, you're looking at a macro influencer, which is about seven to 10 K, but less than that, you can have a micro influencer. It kind of changes based on people's definitions. But if you're looking with someone for about five to 10 K followers, you'll often find that their engagement is so much better and that they do have a lot of, um, a lot of people that are willing to engage with them, that are willing to look at what they're promoting and really leverage that. And they have their own kind of mini community, which can be a lot stronger than than some of the bigger influencers. That's not to say a lot of the bigger influencers don't have good engagement rates because some do have really good engagement rates and some of their audiences are very engaged. Um, but micro influencers do typically tend to have a better engagement rate. Um, so there's a stat here, micro influencers have a 41.7% higher engagement rate than larger influencers. So the second trend is smart advertising. So customers have begun to wise up to social ads, which is where the most creative campaigns will prosper. I'm pretty sure we could all go on Facebook now and we would be targeted with a retargeting ad or an ad based around our interests or spookily enough, something that we've spoken about recently, not knowing that you have microphone permissions on, but anyway. Um, so we've also looked at what social platforms you consider to be the most effective for reaching your social go uh, your business goals. A lot of people say Facebook there, once again, it's the biggest platform, it's where the most users are. But then we've also got Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, a little bit further down there, um, YouTube, TikTok, I imagine this to rise. This is a 22 sur 2022 survey, so this is pretty recent. But just remember that TikTok has only been around properly for a couple of years, obviously. Um, it was musically before that, but I imagine that to rise a little bit more. And then you've got WhatsApp, Pinterest, Snapchat, and other. So no one wants to no one wants their experience on any social network to be interrupted by ads from brands um, that are as boring as they are self-serving. So it's about using um, kind of creative advertising stra advertising strategies to successfully run ads on these networks to understand what the audience mindset is. So being a little bit more creative with kind of what you're doing. Um, a lot of that, it links into kind of what we do with a lot of our clients and it is linking it into certain campaigns as well. So what we'll do is we'll have a campaign plan, we'll have strong messaging, we'll kind of look at what, our, what our target audience wants, we'll build a campaign around that, and then we will also run social ads around that. So it is kind of a little bit more targeted to that actual audience, rather than just, hi, this is our service, the end. Um, so did you know more than half, so 51.4% of 18,100 marketers was that was that were surveyed and um, said that they're planning to increase their paid social spend in 2022. That's music to my ears because a lot of people are kind of starting to wise up to how 
how social can fit into the overall marketing funnel with everything else and how all the channels work together. Um, and like I said, a lot of it is kind of building on that brand awareness, building a community. Um, it's a lot harder to track social, as I've said, it's quite difficult. Um, but with what I've said, there are ways that you can do it, such as social listening, conversion paths, etc. Um, so another thing that I've put is being smarter with social to measure ROI. So we already know that quite a few companies have said in recent surveys that they don't really see the ROI that comes from social. Um, and that they're, but what I've done is I've put together, um, this was from the recent Hootsuite survey, how many marketers feel comfortable to measure ROI with social. Um, so social media has a priming effect on the rest of your marketing. Social can help you gain valuable customer insights. And social is its most powerful when paid and organic work together. That is a massive point that I put forward a lot is I like to use paid and organic social together because you can really start to leverage what campaigns you run through paid and organic, but also building up that community. So often we'll use follower ads, which I, I always say Facebook lads, uh, Facebook lads, Facebook likes um, or Instagram followers is a vanity metric. Um, it's kind of a lot of businesses care about how many inquiries they get through. They don't necessarily care about you know how many followers they have or how many likes they have and it's a lot of those followers or likes might not potentially be um relevant if that makes sense but it kind of all works together so if you're doing follower ads and you're targeting a specific audience so let's say you're using lookalike audiences you're using retargeting audiences if you're a b2c you might want to use interest-based ads and um, because you have a little bit more of a broader audience to work with if you can start to build up that audience and leverage those those paid follower ads and then you can start to see your organic impressions increase you start to see your organic engagement increase then that's kind of where everything works together and where paid and organic do work in very very nicely um another one there social can help you gain valuable customer insight you can kind of have a look at your analytics um especially linkedin is really really good to kind of look to see what kind of job titles you're reaching um, but also social listening as well. So look at what your audience are talking about. Think, look at kind of how they perceive your brand might be one as well. And um, you can do that really easily in the Twitter search bar. If you put in your business, you can kind of see what anyone's tweeting about anything. Say there is a recent um, recent industry news, you can type in the keywords in Twitter and just see what people are talking about, what people's opinions are, and that can help drive what campaigns you do next and how you execute it according to what your audience is talking about. So the way businesses look at social is constantly changing. Um, organizations are looking to use social for brand protection and risk mitigation, which jumped 5% um, from 5% to 20% this year. Um, this includes being ahead of the competition, increasing engagement and getting smarter with what to, what to post to increase brand visibility. So a lot of that goes back to what I was saying about customer insights, seeing what they're talking about, using paid and or organic to work together. Um, and just kind of leveraging that to increase in engagement um, and then we've got another good old did you know and um, so 83 percent of marketers are confident about quantifying the roi of social media and um, this was from a recent study that came out more recently than the other one that i showed on the other slide and um, so year on year marketers are feeling a lot more confident about how they quantify roi for social media and a lot of that like i said comes from conversion paths social listening and just looking at the overall value of what it brings in the channel mix and then number four the rise of social e-commerce so e-commerce is massive and it goes without saying, especially since um, COVID-19 and the pandemic. Um, so it's, it's predicted to increase e-commerce. Um, it's supposed to, um, the growth is expected to continue reaching 21.8% by 2024. How people shop is changing. Um, and how people shop is changing. And a lot of people, like I mentioned, do kind of look on Instagram and Facebook and social media to research brands and products. Um, so I've just put in a quote there um, from the co-founder of the 
conventional AI platform heyday. And he said, now social is the brand's voice. It's a core platform to engage with, sell to and service customers. That is just, I think that sums it up really, really well. It's your brand's voice. It's how you reflect your brand culture and values and how you engage with your audience and your customers and how you turn that audience into customers, how you retain customers and build in that community and that engagement. So if you find that your customer base is kind of the more younger generation, um, social com commerce could be game changing for your marketing strategy. Um, so 53%, 53.2% of global internet users aged 16 to 24 said they chose social networks as their primary source of information when researching brands. Um, you can also use Instagram shopping as well to tag products and go through to your website. Um, you can also use that feature on Facebook as well. Um, and then I've just put an example here of how a brand leveraged social e-commerce and um, so a beauty brand called rebel and beauty embraced social commerce to survive throughout COVID-19 by hosting live makeup sessions on Instagram and building a community the brand owner then launched a Shopify storefront complete with a brand new product line to keep up with the surging demand and um, when I read this these interestingly didn't really do anything online before COVID-19 they had a physical store and that was about it but what they did is they used social to kind of leverage live streams building a community and then the sales grew from there um so that's kind of where it all fits in because a lot of that came from awareness um and then Finally, number five, using social as a customer service tool. I know I mentioned about this before. Um, there's an interesting stat here from HubSpot, which says 40% of, of consumers expect brands to respond within the first hour of reaching out on social media. I know I do. I'm very impatient. Um, if, for example, I, I very, very rarely ever complain on social, but I have had to <laughs> occasionally. <laughs> I hate to be that person um, but I've had to I've had to tweet the brand and I kind of expect to have that that response within within a couple of hours rather than waiting for example two days when you know things could have been sorted or I could have sorted it a different way and um, so have you ever had an experience with a brand and gone straight to social media to make your voice heard many others have too with 70 percent of people expect to message a business more in the future for customer service questions and 64 percent of people surveyed would rather message than call a business it's a lot easier you've got your laptop you've got your phone you've got your tablet go on to social especially if you're already browsing social go on to social tweet go on to social you know send a facebook message or whatever so much easier rather than picking the, up the phone and potentially having to go through kind of waiting queues etc i know i get that a lot with ee i would rather just sort it via live chat or social um so with co customers looking to use social media for customer service reasons it's more important than ever to leverage your social platforms to satisfy their needs 59 percent of marketers agree that social customer care has increased in value for their organization in the past 12 months i do believe that this is just going to rise year on year it was another thing that came up in um in uh, social trends last year once again it's popped up again um i imagine it's pop up again next year um so just kind of use social as a customer service tool and then finally i know i've talked a lot i've been on for half an hour i kind of need a drink <laughs> um but i just wanted to put forward other key social trends in 2022 which is quite interesting um so i've put um another screenshot in from hubspot and this just kind of shows the primary goals of a social media strategy in 2021 versus 2022 one thing that struck me that was quite interesting about this is that as you can see here so the orange is 2022 and then the green is 2021 a lot more people um are a lot less people sorry are looking for social to advertise products and services whereas in 2022 a lot more people are looking to use social to increase brand awareness and um, reaching new audiences um and also improving customer experience and retention as well and um, so there's some kind of big ones which 
it kind of showcases that a lot more people are kind of wising up where social fits in in the overall marketing funnel and kind of saying right okay so in order to kind of drive this we do need that whole brand awareness we do need to reach a new audience rather than necessarily going straight into we want the inquiries because a lot of the time it can be hard because a lot of businesses just want the inquiries they just want the sales and that's why it is quite hard for us social media marketers um however it is kind of about utilizing that brand awareness and that brand reach to end up nurturing this audience and not only acquiring them as customers but looking at the advocacy and loyalty as well retaining them um so tiktok will dominate the social media space know this already um if you're not utilizing tiktok give it a try honestly um raw videos videos that give that give value to the audience etc and um, reaching new audiences will become the number one social media goal for businesses as we touched on before companies will make more dedicated social media hires and um, because a lot more people are kind of seeing the value in social um augmented reality will become consumers preferred way to try on products and interact with brands this has already previously been done with um brands such as ikea so i know on the ikea website you can kind of pick an item and then you can see it in your living room and see how it would look where you would like to put it and kind of look at the colors etc and um, so augmented reality is another thing that's been up and coming for a few years and once again is on 2022 trends businesses in the b2b space will increase their investments in instagram and twitter um social advertising will become more sophisticated as well and um, so that's kind of what i was saying before about using looking at a campaign plan looking at campaigns based on what you know that your audience wants and then using that for social advertising looking at the creative looking to see how you can execute that and um, businesses will invest more in long form and short form content as well as live audio chat rooms no mention about this earlier um obviously short form has been on the rise because of tiktok but that's not to say that long form um video content isn't being consumed as you as you saw earlier youtube is still one of the most you most used social platforms social selling demands will grow which is kind of what i touched on on the previous slide about social e-commerce and consumers will crave snackable content so this tends to be visually engaging can be co posted consistently and is often used to support overarching campaigns um so kind of a lot of it is kind of value based so you might want to talk about statistics you might want to engage in a conversation um, and just kind of give the audience a reason to engage people can be quite funny when it comes to liking and commenting not everyone wants to give a like and comment to any business so it's about how you kind of showcase that I'm just going to finish on a last point when I'm talking about kind of social and its impact and a really good I was talking to my mum ironically yesterday and a really good example of it is what Aldi do on social now Aldi's social media team are amazing um mainly because whoever high up was kind of like look you can go and do say whatever do whatever was very very brave but it really does pay off and how i perceive aldi as a brand is a lot more kind of humorous light-hearted etc rather than kind of just selling like food or you know consumables or, or kind of whatever so what they've done is they've leveraged social to get across their brand values to get across their brand tone of voice and they haven't necessarily obviously aldi doesn't necessarily directly sell like online a lot of what they get is in store um but it's almost looking at that customer perception in order to see kind of how people view your brand and i, I reckon the aldi marketing team must do a lot of social listening to see what people say about aldi and see how people perceive the brand but that's a really good example of how a business has leveraged social to get across their brand tone of voice um to leverage who they are and what they stand for um i've just put in some key readings and sources used so if anyone wants this powerpoint i can send it across and um, these are kind of some of the main sources that i got my information from um, but there's also a lot more information on here i could have probably have spent about two hours on this call um if i'd have wanted to fit all this in but here's some other key readings and sources um from reputable um sites as well um such as hubspot um 
Smart Insights is another good one, Hootsuite, um, etc. And then that's me.